in year number four. It's a yank on the footy with Craig Wessels. Let's all sit back and enjoy a chat about the greatest game on the face of the earth. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 249 of A Yank on the Footy. I'm Craig Wessels, coming to you from Sandusky, Ohio, and thanks for checking out this episode. This is my fifth episode in my series on why I truly believe American NFL fans will love the NFL. In a moment, I'm going to be joined by Thomas McMillan. Thomas is the host of the Any Given Sunday podcast and YouTube show. Now, before I dive into the discussion with Thomas, I do like to uh, start out an episode. If you're new to the podcast, I do give a shout out to a local footy club at the outset of each episode. And today's local club are the Kilmore Blues of the Northern Football League in Victoria. The club has teams from the juniors all the way up through senior sides. And coming up on the 26th this week, the under nines through the under under 16s had their final practice games of the year in preparation for starting their 2023 fixture. They're facing off with three different clubs, the Wallen Magpies, the Whittle Sea Eagles, and the Mernda Demons. Now, the Kilmore Division Three reserves begin their season on April the 15th, facing off against the Lorimore Power at the Lorimar Reserve Main Oval. Now, last week, many members of the club participated in a bunch of different fundraising events for their Big Night Inn, which they had this past weekend, including uh, Rhino and Pickles, uh, running a marathon, and longtime supporter of the Blues, Paulie McDonald, doing a 200-kilometer bike ride to raise funds for that evening. Great job, gentlemen, and I want to wish the Blues the absolute best in 2023. I hope they have a fantastic, fantastic season. Now, before we jump into the chat, I do want to take one moment and reflect back on one of the previous clubs that I had given a shout-out to. Uh, if you've listened to any of my more recent episodes, I've... Uh, had a discussion uh, about uh, the Tracy Village Razorbacks in the Northern Territories up in the Darwin area. And I featured them back in episode 223 discussing a social media post about one of their under 12 players uh, by the name of Anthony who had suffered a pretty significant arm injury uh, last weekend. Now, Anthony's under 12 side did end up winning their premiership. But uh, this past weekend, their Division I senior men's side defeated Jabiru, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, 9862 to 6945 to capture the NTFL Division I Premiership. Ashley Ringen was uh, named Best on Ground, receiving the Bill Best on Ground Medal, named after the late Bill Gear. Razorbacks, this has been a fantastic year. This is two Premierships in the last week and a half or so, so absolutely fantastic. I appreciate all the kind words that I've had from from so many of you, and I do appreciate your generosity as well. That was absolutely awesome. I will let you know several of the uh, the shirts and jumpers and such that uh, that were sent. I have shared with uh, young people, uh, young children of uh, teachers that work in the school that I teach in. So they were thrilled to hear the story about those, and uh, the kids were very excited to receive those. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into my chat with Thomas McMillan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another one of our discussions on why NFL fans would love the AFL. And I am joined by one of the hosts of the Any Given Day Australia, excuse me, the Any Given Sunday Australia podcast. Uh, and this is Thomas McMillan. And Thomas, thanks for joining me this morning, sir. No, no, you're more than welcome. I appreciate uh, inviting me on. I appreciate yeah, I appreciate you taking time. I know you just got off of work, and uh, I see you're rocking the new shirt there. I saw you know saw you guys talking about that in your uh, most recent episode there, and yeah, sh shipping is a little more than you thought it was going to be, right? From what I heard, <laughs> yeah, I haven't shipped to the states yet. I'm sure that'll be a little oh. bit more again. Uh, when I buy stuff from the the cat store, it's usually about twenty five bucks shipping. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Now, fair. yeah about uh, two years ago, I had a, a a gentleman that's a cat supporter who's also a big Cleveland sports fan. That uh, he sent me a bunch of cat stuff, and I sent him. I I'd been I'm almost sixty years old, but I've been collecting you know baseball football cards for you know since I was a little kid, and I went through like all of the binders and such that I had and pulled out a lot of duplicates, and I sent him a a three ring binder full of cards that probably weighed about 20 pounds 
and it was it was over ninety dollars to ship it there. Yeah. And my wife said, "You're not doing that again." Uh, <laughs> I said, "You're right. I'm not." Uh, nah, so, so how did you uh, how did you become a fan of the NFL? Um, I've always, like we just spoke about before offline, that it, it really coincided well with the AFL, and and you know, one was September till. February and then in AFL's February through to September, so it really worked well. With uh, I worked from home at the time, and during mm-hmm. the day it was on, and it, it worked perfectly to watch it. And my dad always talked about this team uh, that were they were called the Cheeseheads, and I didn't quite understand, but uh, <laughs> once I did understand, I really got behind the Packers. And and as you can see from all the stuff behind me, that, yes, uh, yeah, grown up a Packers fan, so yeah, yeah I'm Just seeing. I'm seeing two Packers helmets, uh, Dolphins, a Chargers, like an original. Char- oh, oh, a white 49ers helmet. Okay. And I think it's a, a Panthers up there, a Seahawks. I got some Cal. I got everything. Okay. Okay. And an Alan Lazard uh, jersey up on the wall as well. And I did yeah. see you had him on as a guest as on, on the podcast as well. I did, yeah, which uh, was pretty huge early on. And then we just had, uh, well, we're, we're releasing it tomorrow our time, which Mike Burton from the uh, – Chiefs, so that was that was pretty That's, huge interview. Yeah, I saw you guys. You guys shared a, a little introductory clip on that, and I did see that. Uh, and that that's an awesome get to you know. I mean, you know, because he still is. You know, he's he's still on cloud nine, and and uh, yeah. you know, and set aside time to sit down and talk with you guys. So that was absolutely awesome. So yeah, you know, the interesting thing about the Packers, and 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 I don't know if your dad was a supporter of the Packers. Is he is does he support the Packers also, or is he, did he just know of them as the Cheeseheads? No, nah, he just knew of that. He's definitely a Packers man now because I've really okay. got him into it, but uh, he wasn't at the time. Okay. Now, you do you know the kind of the origin story of the Cheesehead thing now? Is that something that's come that you figured out uh, now? I did go over – I watched one game, which uh, was the Seahawks round one back in ooh, 2017 and then did like a, a tour. So I learned all about okay. the Acme Packers and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because plus you know the state of Wisconsin is a is a huge dairy producing state also. So, yeah, yeah, I mean you know they're you go to the Wisconsin State Fair and I don't know I don't know if they offer them at Lambeau Field, but you know the the fried cheese curds is a is yeah. a is a huge thing there. I mean it's just you know it's it's a uh, I think if you if if you have season tickets and you you buy a, an order of the fried cheese curds for. Uh, at each game that you go to, you actually get uh, at the the eighth game, eighth home game of the season. You actually get your ticket next to a cardiologist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. But the neat thing about the Packers is that the Packers are in many ways the closest thing to an AFL club that the NFL has because of the ownership yeah. structure of the club, and that it is just yeah. you know. It's it's absolutely awesome that they uh, that they are they're they're owned by the fans. Now, yeah. have you been able to uh, to acquire stock in the club? I haven't yet. Earlier this year, when it went up, uh, I tried hard, but we you have to be a um, I mean, well, I have to have a, a residence in America to to claim it. So I haven't been able to get someone to claim it for me yet. But we'll okay. get there one day. Okay, well, I because I um because I know somebody who works in the Cats front office who is a mad Packers supporter also who I I believe she said that she actually does own a little you know I don't know how many shares one share whatever it is but she does own some some Packers stock uh, you know yeah. as part of as part of the club so it's just a Great. it's just a really it's just a neat concept and uh, yeah I don't think the other thirty one clubs are gonna ever end up like that because, as I said in another episode, you know you the other thirty one clubs you've got thirty one prospective you know bond villains that own all of them, yeah, and no, and no one's giving it up, so no, no, they're certainly not. They are certainly not. So um who are as far as footy goes, who do you support in, in uh, footy? Brisbane Lions. Brisbane okay, Lions. okay. they were they were my. They were my runner-up club when I was deciding on which club I wanted to support back in 2017. I started started following the game in 16, and I narrowed it down. The, the final two were the Lions and the Cats, and I, I went with I went with Geelong. And it's I have a long family history of working for Ford, which had a lot to do with that decision. Um, and there was there was actually a, a player with the Cats at the time who 
kind of pushed me into their camp and now he's on your list uh in Nakaya Cockatoo. So it's uh, uh yeah. yeah. Yeah, he and and I I think he could be a linebacker in the NFL, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially with stadium, he's not bigger than he looks too. Yeah, he he and and I I I I did I did a series of episodes over the off season on my most memorable game. And I actually did one and it was, it was a game that he was integral in pushing me into the cat's camp. And I, I sent, I shared it with him on like a, a DM on, on Instagram, but I'm guessing he hasn't read it at all, but yeah, I just, I've got my Nakai cockatoo button over here. So, um, yeah. so, you know, the NFL has done a, an awfully wonderful job of of growing the game overseas. And I, I hear rumblings that the uh that there's gonna be a game in Sydney in what 2024 that the Rams are that'd coming be, there. Yeah, that'd be incredible if it was. Yeah. So it's uh yeah, I, I don't know that for a fact, but I've heard some other people mention that that's likely gonna be happening. Um yeah. so I guess the you know we have to figure out, you know, what can the AFL do to, to make inroads here in North America? Because, you know, I, I, I honestly think and NFL fans, you may not like me saying this, but I, I'm a bigger AFL fan than I am an NFL fan. And I've been watching the NFL my entire life. I mean, I live about a 90 minute drive from the NFL hall of fame. Uh, I haven't been there since I was about, well, about 25 years ago when I was still coaching football, we went there, we played a state championship game nearby there. So we went that day for a couple of hours, but it's been a while since I've been there, but how, how do we get the, the, the comp to realize that there's an untapped market here? Mm. I think they, they know that there is, but they just haven't worked out a proper way to get it over there yet. Like I know a few years ago they tried, I think it was Collingwood maybe went over the, and, and did a few preseason camps and things mm-hmm. like that, but just haven't really broken into that market yet. So, Well, and I know 2020 there was supposed to be a round one game here. Uh, Essendon and GWS were supposed to play here. Might have been 2021, but whatever it was, COVID interrupted it and uh, – so that didn't end up happening, but it's, uh, I just, I just think that it's, um, it, it is an absolutely wonderful comp and it, and it, and I think it brings so much more to the table, even than the NFL, because of just the fact that it, there's so much fluidity to it. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it, a it's a 360 game. You can come from any angle, but yeah. I think one of the biggest is the, the actual ground that we play on. Like there's not many ovals. Getting no. around, there's a lot, a lot of rectangles getting around, and it's easy to to go through soccer and, and things like that. You can find pitches to play on all the time, but to have that oval surface is uh, quite unique. Yes, yeah, so, supposedly there was somebody that was building some supposedly like world class cricket grounds here in North America. Now, not necessarily with huge seating capacity, but in terms of the grounds themselves, it was supposed to be something top notch some some wealthy person who is a big fan of cricket i guess was was working on doing that um but uh you know you you've you guys have you know have have embraced you know the games here in in north america now would you say you know, cuz i know that your your website and your twitter account talks about how you discuss the nfl major league baseball the nhl the mlb would you say that you predominantly focus on the nfl yeah, hundred percent. We're we're an NFL show, but uh, mm-hmm. obviously, especially coming up now in the off season, we're going to have to uh, dabble into the others. Especially when it comes to the the post seasons of of the others, that's when we'll really we'll, we'll dabble in them. But uh, we are definitely a predominantly NFL. Okay. Player. Now, do you guys? Do you guys? And I because I've not gone far enough back into your catalog at all. But do you guys touch on footy at all, or are you guys just a footy fans away from it, but just don't don't dig into that at all? Uh, we bring it up just in more of our personal because okay. we all we all still play footy as well, so okay. like local. So it definitely comes up, and we refer to different things as it like as if it would happen in the AFL, how it would go, and things okay. like that. But we don't discuss. Um, well, we brought it up because the other two boys are actually Geelong fans. So when Geelong beat uh, yeah, when Geelong beat mm-hmm. Brisbane in the prelim this year, it, it came up for sure. But otherwise, it's. It's more just well, a talking. 
than than going through games well, and stuff. I was thinking more along the lines of the grand final. I wasn't thinking about the the Brisbane Geelong game. So I, that was that, my, that little celebratory hand raise there was more about the game with Sydney and, rather than Brisbane there. So hopefully that didn't you know get you too uh, too <laughs> angry with me there. <laughs> so have you have you found that? Uh, your your friends that that you associate with the ones that you even still play footy with have they all become followers of the NFL as well? Uh, a lot of them, uh, especially the NBA, NFL over here, they mm-hmm. they always talk about it. They're not always across, you know, especially the NFL. They're not always across all the rules and things like that. So everyone always seems to to have an idea about it. But the fact that early on we started off. Uh, just trying to be basic level NFL, you know. If you had a question, send it in, we'll answer for you. Like, um, just trying to get your, your their heads, especially mm-hmm. around the game. So they've all definitely jumped on board. Whether they're followers is a different story, but they all understand the game would be better. Okay, so, um, so the, you. you you're you're finding that you are making some traction with your listenership, though. You you've got a you've got a, a pretty steady listenership because it looks like your your um, subscriptions are looks like they're on the uptick. You got a pretty good solid number of the subscriptions on your YouTube channel, which I'm I'll link to YouTube and to your Apple Podcast uh, in the show notes. Um, but do you get a lot of good feedback from the people who are listening? Do you get a lot of engagement from them? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when we're able to get uh, the the guests that we have had on. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the pe- uh, the you know friends and family around here and you know, all listeners around here can really get around that because they can relate to it a bit more. Where um, just listening to it, if we're talking about you know a specific play or a game or something like that, they might get a little bit lost. But to start off and listen to actually how, how people got into it. And, and we've tried to have a lot of Australians that are making their way into college football as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so having that connection of, all right, okay. uh, it, it's not just the US, it's the Aussie yeah. side of things. Oh, well, they, they can really get No, and I've, I guess like I said, I've not scrolled back far enough, but I imagine you've probably talked to somebody like Nathan Chapman from Pro Kick Australia, that sort of thing. We're working on Nathan, yeah. He hasn't okay. quite come on before. I had I had him on a couple of years ago. Um, it was great, great guy. He uh, it was you know it was, it was kind of fun because you know he taught you know I saw an interview with him where he was basically saying you know that uh, you know within a few years he expected all the punters in the United States to be Australian. And I said, well, probably maybe all but three of them, and maybe four. You know, like the the Naval Academy, the Air Force Academy, the U.S. Military Academy, and the Coast Guard Academy would probably have Americans punting, but he may darn well have all of the rest of the spots filled by by former footy players. Which, yeah, you know, He's I, pretty- yeah, it's it's amazing. It it's at, it is absolutely amazing. So, you know, looking at 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 footy, you know, for the NFL fans. You know, are there? You know, it is a three sixty game, but you know, if you were to to make any comparisons between what you see in a gridiron game with it with an AFL contest, what what similarities would you say that there are, and what differences do you think might be something that would just get the the average American NFL fan to just sit up and take notice and go, "Holy cow, this is awesome!" Yeah. I think obviously the the punter has the the biggest translation into our sport, but mm-hmm. uh, besides the the obvious where he's kicking it, I think you know the big wide receivers and the tight ends. You know, if you love watching them take amazing catches running into the end zone, things like that, that that's happening a hundred times a game with us. And you know, I, I'm sure you've heard about you know taking a specky or something mm-hmm. like that. That's we've got some athletes that can literally sit on players' heads, which is yes when. It's incredible to see, and then if you enjoy the the big hits of the big O and O and D line, then same. We're doing that over here, but you know, it always seems to freak the Americans out when we, we, we're not wearing pads. It's just straight body on body, and uh, there can be some really big, violent collisions, and they can come from any angle. Which, if you enjoy the big hit, then yes, you can yes. get around. That. But, but they might say, footy players are wearing athletic tape. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth <laughs> guards most of the time. That's yes, mouth, yes, but you know the, the shoulders are strapped up, and that's and that's usually about the extent of it. Yeah, it's uh, 
you know, and it's, you know, it's, and it, it's interesting to see the, and I think probably it probably happens in the NFL, but you maybe don't notice it because of the, the helmets and face masks. But, you know, when a player gets, you know, takes a shot to the nose and gets the nosebleed, you know, there, there's always an interesting approach that then I'm not going to get into specifics, but there's an interesting thing that I've seen footy do to deal with that problem during the course of the game to where a player may only have use of one nostril for a while. Uh, Digging up, straight up. Uh-huh. Yeah. But we're, <laughs> we're not going to get into, into what may be getting utilized there, but I think if people have an imagination, they're probably going to figure that out rather quickly. Uh, yeah. It works a lot. Well, so. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure with you playing, you've probably had that happen to you before. Yeah. Once or twice, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, you know, it, I, I've described, you know, footy, the, the way that I described it back early on when I started doing the podcast, I, I, I talked about it as being kind of a combination of rugby, gridiron, soccer, basketball, volleyball, cross country running, mixed martial arts and calculus. Yeah, yeah. Is how I described it because it as you said it is so three-dimensional because it's and it and it doesn't it doesn't stop. You know, the the NFL there's a lot of great action, but that action lasts for 8 or 10 seconds and then there's 25, 30, 40 seconds to catch your breath, to talk about it, to yeah. quickly quickly go run it and grab a beer out of the fridge or whatever the case may be and get back before the next play we don't you don't get that in footy and it's no. it's 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 a wonderful um i think it's a wonderful alternative as you said it is a uh it is a it is a great fit for the nfl fan so if you're if you happen to be an nfl fan who is not a baseball fan and you know and as I mentioned to you off air, you know, the salary cap is is one of the things that's really got me irked. But a lot of the other rules in terms of, um, you know, you know, having pitch clocks, uh, telling a pitcher how long they can take to to throw the ball, um, the, the the elimination of the shit the shift this year, because you have you know, and the analogy that I've used is with cricket. I said, you know, if a think about it, if you, if you're a cricket fan. And the, and I don't, I know there's all the different levels and different comps, you know, they, they have the tests and the, the, the big bash and that type of stuff. And, but let's just say that the, you know, the big bash, the, is, is that the BBL? Yeah. 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 Let's say the BBL decided to make a rule that, you know, if, if my team realizes that this person who's up to bat can only hit the ball one direction. So I deploy my defenders that way in order to catch the ball and get them out. If if the B, if the league then says, well, you're not allowed to have that many defenders over there because it makes it difficult for that person to hit the ball there, you might say, learn to hit the ball the other way. Yeah. Hit the ball. There's a there's an entire other part of the stadium that or ground that you could hit the ball to. Well, baseball starting this year, baseball has said, and you, if you've watched, you know, if you've watched some baseball, which you guys talk about it a little bit what has happened over the last few years is that players are so gung ho on trying to hit a home runs in the launch angle and that sort of thing that they have for most of them or many of them have forgotten how to hit the ball the other direction. So defenses yeah. have been moving an infielder over to the other side of the field to try to get that person out. Well, they're not allowed to do that anymore starting this year. Yeah. So that, that extra infielder so I, you know, so it's rewarding players who cannot do their job well. And that's just something that really frustrates me. Yeah, yeah. There is a rule in cricket of um, it's only on one side that you can have. So you can't have more than I think it's six fielders mm -hmm. on the one leg side. Um, but if you if you can't stop someone when you've got five fielders on that side, then something's wrong. I think. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, but yeah, you're not. You know, you wouldn't necessarily. And again, you know since cricket is is very much a 360 game as well in terms of you making contact you know you theoretically if you can hit the ball behind you you're you're allowed to do yeah. that correct i mean you can hit it in any in any direction so you do have to be a little bit more selective in terms of where you deploy your defenders there but you know baseball it's pretty much you've got one direction you're hitting the ball it's about a about a 90 degree you know plane of of the area that the ball is in quote unquote fair territory where the runners can move up so I, I, 
I miss baseball, but I am so thankful for footy. You know, that, yeah. you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I haven't looked back at for it though. I mean, I, you know, I, I grew up a Cleveland sports fan. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been a Browns fan my whole life. So those of you who are St. Kilda supporters, you know what it's like to be a Browns fan. Cause we don't win yeah. very often either. Um, in turn, well, you guys have one, you know, one premiership in your history. We haven't won one since 1964. So it's been well, a while. 66, uh, I think. So yeah. they're the same. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, now they did have some success back in the forties and early fifties, but not, not again since 1964. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, since, since they came back into the league, it's been, uh, it's been, you know, mistake after mistake, heartbreak after heartbreak. So the thing with, with footy is that I don't have, you know, I know I'm supposed to, you know, as a cat supporter, I know, I'm, I know I'm not supposed to like Hawthorne. That's kind of what yeah. I've been told. I'm not supposed to like Hawthorne, but I don't, I don't dislike Hawthorne because I came, I came to <clears throat> watching footy so late in life that I don't have that in my DNA. Like yeah. you being like you being a Packers fan, you know, which club you're supposed to hate, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it, like it really, the, it could really be two. Yeah. yeah. You know, the bears and the Vikings. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. But do you, do you really deep down hate them? Because you came, you came, you know, you didn't necessarily grow up with the game or if your dad told you about it, maybe you did grow up with the game. So maybe you do have that in you that, that, that I don't have. Yeah. Well, it's been, I reckon I was about 10 or 11 when I got introduced to it. Okay. So about 20 years. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I think definitely the Vikings, I have a probably more of a hate for than, than the Bears, but it's I reckon that might also be from recent years where the Vikings been a bit more successful than the Bears, mm-hmm. so it's right, been right. a bit more, a bit more of a rivalry than yeah uh, the Bears, unfortunately. So now I'm, you know, I'm I'm not supposed to like the Steelers. I res- I respect the Steelers because that organization is very well run. They do a great job. Um, now I don't know. I, I'm assu- well. If you've been following the game for twenty years, then you know the history of the Browns. And what yeah. happened, you know, because oh, I I absolutely loathe the Baltimore Ravens. I I hate the Baltimore Ravens with every fiber of my being. I, I've I've joked with people that I said that if if my first wife owned an NFL team and her team was playing the Ravens, I would go sit in the owner's box with her family to cheer against the Ravens. Yeah, <laughs> that's, so, that's, in a that's what we love about it. Though. Yeah, that's that's the thing. That's the thing that I hate about it. So you know, it's uh. So, you know, you talked about, you know, the speckies and that type of thing. Um, and, you know, just the sh- just sheer speed and, and what a lot of, them, you know, you know, fans who have not watched people who have not watched footy before may not realize is that the, the, the ground is massive, you yeah. know, you know, from, from basically from the, the goalpost at one end of the goalpost at the other end is about an average of about a hundred and depending upon the ground, it's about 175 meters away. Yep. So. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, which means that it is about 50, 55 yards longer than an NFL field and yep. also about 150 meters wide at the at the midpoint. Yeah. And it's shaped like an oval, which, as you said, is, you know, is just, you know, it's something that, that we haven't, you know, recognized. I, I, it'd be interesting to see the NFL played on, on an oval field. Um, but, you know, it's, yeah, it's, well, we, we did have... Um... The Cal Bears and uh, Hawaii came out and played, but a lot of our stadiums, because we have the NRL, mm-hmm. we have rugby union, we have soccer. A lot of our stadiums nowadays can shift, especially on the what we call them the wings on the on the sidelines. We can bring right, in right. the stadium, make it more of a square. So okay, okay. So do they, does that can that have? Because I think the turf can come out at Marvel, can it? That, isn't it movable? Marvel can, yeah. Or yeah. they just put oh, it won't come out, but they, they have stuff they put on top of the turf, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So they could have they could have a different, you know, they can move the stands or they can move things around there. You know, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if the MCG works that way or not, but you know, it's uh, probably, I'd say probably they not. Put stuff on it, but they can't move the stands. Okay. So you would be a, you'd still be a good distance away from the from yeah. the from the, the action on the field if they were there. So which is why if they if they come and they said they're going to be going to Sydney, they're probably going to the SCG, I would imagine. 
Uh, no, nah, there's the. Or is there, uh, a, or is there nah, another so- a, soccer field that would fit them? They, I think rugby. It's Olympic Stadium or something they've called. Oh, I can't know the name, the, the well, sponsor's that, name. Well, that makes you, sense. You, yeah, you go to that one for sure because that's <laughs> the one that holds about 70 or 80,000. Okay. And, so even more than can, the even more than the SCG. Yeah, the SCG is quite small and old. It's you, you go into the SCG for the the love of the actual stadium and things mm-hmm. like that. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and depending upon the game, sometimes the players end up getting locked outside of the stadium. Um, yeah. it's, it's happened last year when Buddy kicked his thousandth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that was still a, yeah that that image right there. And I I showed that footage to my to my students. I, you know, I've been a teacher for twenty nine years, but I, I showed that footage to the, my students, even though the Cats lost that game by. What five or six goals? They got yeah. their revenge. They got their revenge. Um, but uh, you know, just seeing that that overhead shot of the of the crowd just emptying onto the field and, and engulfing him was just it was just something to behold. I mean, I, that's something that you're probably never going to see another thousand goal kicker in in footy. Nah, that's why the game's played now. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. So, what part of the game do you think would be the most difficult for Americans to grasp? Um, I'm not sure. I think the fact that it is, like you said, it's it's nonstop. So, mm-hmm. if, in in terms of playing it, you you really have to do. You have to be strong, but you have to be able to to, like you said, run and run and run and run. Like we have, we do have breaks. You do go to the bench, but you only go on the bench for one or two minutes, and you're back on the field. So. In terms of playing it, I think that constant moving would be harder for a lot of people coming across from the NFL. You know, mm-hmm. play it probably suits someone like a, from what I know, a lock, like a lacrosse player. That's probably a bit more of that kind of constant movement, okay. constant around. That's I might be a little bit off base, but that's just off the top of my head there. Yeah, uh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, just because it is nonstop, like it's. Uh, it's 20 minutes plus time on, but it's pretty much four 30 minute quarters. So you're going nonstop for you're close to two hours. So yeah, it's um now if you were if you were uh gonna recommend a a uh a classic game for an American fan to go find on YouTube to sit down and watch, what what game would is there one that sticks out to you that you would say, okay, go find this one on YouTube? Uh, of recent year, actually, there's a, a classic game for Brisbane versus, it's it's good for Brisbane, Brisbane versus Geelong. They called it the Miracle on Turf, I reckon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was back in, it was the, Geelong's been very good for a very, you know, at least 20 years you've been really up and about there. Um, Brisbane had a real rough patch about 2014, 2015, around there, we were we were on the slide, but we I reckon we were close to the bottom of the ladder, and you guys were first or second. And uh, I won't ruin it, but you were a long way up, and and we came back, and it's a very good tight finish. So mm-hmm. that's definitely one I would look for. It's Geelong okay. versus Brisbane. Here, but okay. Yeah. Just yeah. I, I, actually, I actually saw somebody mention that particular game on um, Twitter yesterday. And I and I told them I said you know I would love to you know and they were talking about how much they enjoyed that game and I told them I said you know I would love to you know have you on as you know to talk about that particular game if that's your most memorable game and I had a couple of cat supporters going uh, you probably don't want to talk about that and I was like sure I do I mean I don't you know I if it's if it's if it's something that's memorable to you I don't care if, if my club lost it I mean it's you know I mean I I would talk to a, you know a Richmond supporter about the uh, the twenty. 2020 grand final you know where that where the cats got thumped you know because you know you know dusty martin had a phenomenal second half of that game and then i can always speculate and say you know would would a would a healthy gary ablett have made the difference in that game and he breaks his shoulder you know five minutes into the game you know and granted it was going to be his last game i don't know if if he would have been enough to get them over the hump or not but uh you know it'd be it'd be fun to speculate on Absolutely. So, yeah. So when when you uh when you go to games now, do you live? You don't live in Brisbane, do you? Or do you live down in the Melbourne uh, area? Down in Melbourne, yeah. Okay. So when when you go to games, and I don't know how often you get there, uh, 
do you, where do you generally sit on the grounds? Um, so we normally back in the in the past we used to be called uh, a cheer squad, which is the team that, mm-hmm. that used to sit behind the goals. But mm-hmm. as I've grown, that was during when Brisbane won all the, the premierships, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. But nowadays we go a bit more. Uh, it's harder because a lot of our games are at the same time that I'll be playing, so okay. I don't get to go. But when I do get the chance, I usually try and sit on the wing because you can. I feel like you you see a lot more when you're on the wing. You know, okay. second level, see the whole game, and you can see the whole okay. ground. Okay. Now I've I've asked uh, you know some of the other folks that I have I've had on. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if you've been able to watch an NFL game through the what they call the all twenty two camera. Have you been able to do that yet? Were they, uh, you know, because they, because the, the NFL, I think like the NFL Sunday ticket here that, you know, where you can like get all of the out of market games and watch, you know, so if I, I, yeah, I get the Cleveland game here and usually like one other game um, each week here. But if I, if I buy this, this extra add on thing where I could watch all of the games that are outside of the Cleveland market, but they yeah. also then will offer up, what's called the all 22, which is basically it's, it's like a camera that they have at each end of the stadium. That's up above like the goalposts. So you see the entire field opening up. So you see all 22 players at one time from behind the offense. Yeah. I, th- I think it would be awesome, you know, for even for, you know, fans like myself that who've been following the game for, for several years, but still have never been to one in person to be able to see a footy game from that angle, you know, on camera, just to, just to show how players are deployed throughout the ground, because you don't really get to see a really good example of that during the course of what's televised. Yeah, absolutely. Cause you're, you're following the ball more mm-hmm. than you follow players. But so we do a lot of that stuff. I played um, semi high football when I was a bit younger. Um, and, and there is behind the goals footage. Uh, mm-hmm. And they use a lot of that stuff to to show how, like you said, formations and how we've set up and things like that. Also to highlight players if they've done something really well. So um, there was one I remember back in the day, Dane Swan. Uh, he played for Colling, and he was he didn't look like it, but he was an elite runner. And they just showed from behind, from one end where he started, uh, he got a kick at fullback, mm-hmm. and the ball worked its way around and he sprinted down the other end of the, like the other side of the field and then took the market full forward. And so it's a, it's a beautiful tool for coaches to be able to show right, you right. Know, this stuff that you need to do. Yeah. So I can agree with what you're saying there. I haven't and, watched the game. And he is still, I know he's doing a, like a, uh, like a, what they might call a barnstorming tour around Australia right now with, uh, with Ricky Nixon and playing games with like local yeah. clubs all over the right. country to do, to yeah. like help raise money and that sort of thing. Cause he's, he's going to a, uh, a club in S in South Australia that I had on the podcast, uh, last year who had lost like 104 games in a row. Yeah. Uh, Nangwari in the little town in in South Australia, and they, and somebody had burned down their clubhouse. I mean, this this club had just gone through hell. Um, yeah. and it was funny because the the day I was supposed to do the interview, that I was going to have two of the players on, and one of the players tore his ACL that day. So, oh. so he was. So they sent me a picture of him in his hospital bed, but he was he wasn't able to make it. So, um, so you know. Here in this in the states again, you know the uh, we're we're in a similar position to to you when the games are on because they're on you know early on like Monday mornings in Australia. So yeah, you know, I don't does the, does your work schedule change during the NFL season because of the NFL or do you just end up like like you know able to like record the games on your on your TV or on your like your recording device and then watch the games later on? Yeah, so now work is I'm a shift worker, so okay. we're all three. Uh, we're shift workers, so uh, unfortunately it won't change to, to suit the NFL. But we are very fortunate we, that we do get a lot of time that we can watch it. But, um, yeah, so at the start of the season, without changing, we go daylight savings and things mm-hmm. like that. So the early games are at four in the morning, which can mm-hmm. be quite challenging. But uh, I'm lucky enough that the Packers are usually on prime time, so I get to watch them. You know, it's at eleven or twelve o'clock in the afternoon, so it's perfect. There for you me, go. There you go. Yeah, we 
we do it's on uh, ESPN, so we are able to to record it and watch okay. it if we need. To. Good deal. Yeah, that's you know, and d- they they do they offer some sort of like a, a package where you can uh, you like get all of the games to watch, or do you only get a select few games there? Nah, so not through not through the providers, but we can mm-hmm. get games uh, through the NFL that we can, okay. Uh, you can you have anything and, and watch it however you want. Okay. You can get. I think it's NFL. Is it sixty or thirty or something? And it just condenses the games into thirty okay. minutes or minutes, and so, so those who don't have as much time can watch it. Well, that works. That works. Yeah, because we have, you know, those of us who are like international members of of our clubs and that sort of thing, we get uh, what the, what's called the Watch AFL app. So we'll get all of the, um, we'll get all of the games. We can watch them live or on demand, and we can actually watch games on there going back to twenty seventeen. Yeah. Um, and then all of the Fox footy programming is available on there. And, uh, I wish they could get the stuff on channel nine and channel seven on there as well. I mean, we're getting the games from channel seven. Why not give us the program that's on there as well? Cause I mean, I, I, some of the people I've talked to are not necessarily big fans of the front bar, but I, I enjoy it. I would love to be able to watch that when it's on or, you know, footy classified instead of having to go find it on YouTube. Um, because it's you know sports wise, you know, I'll watch the Browns play, uh, and I'll watch you know the Ohio State uh, Buckeyes and the Naval Academy play, but that's about all I watch in terms of sports here in the U.S. The yeah. other, it, the only other stuff that I watch, the other only things I watch are footy, and that's you know, I and I I just I've been using you know the podcast to try to encourage you know my fellow Yanks to check out this game. Cause I, I, I do think, well, while you have fallen in love with the NFL, I, I, I think that, and, and this is my opinion. Uh, I, I think the AFL, I think that, that Australian football, not necessarily the AFL, but I think Australian football is a, is a superior game because of the, the three dimensionality, because of it's a nonstop type thing, but, you know, because, you know, you're you're playing offense and defense sometimes within you know split seconds of one another. You, you, there's not the shift where you go to a commercial break and that sort of thing, and the the other guys come out and you get to go take a rest. No, you're you're out there and you're going and and you know if you if you're you know if you're a midfielder who's you know, got you know great lung capacity and you've got you know the the endurance for it, you may be running 15, 16 kilometers in a game. Yeah, and maybe and maybe even more than that, quite frankly, because yeah, it would be. Yeah, I've I've seen somewhere you know, I've converted it where some of them have run seven, eight, nine miles during the course of a game, while getting knocked on their butt twenty seven or twenty eight times a game as well. Uh, it's just yeah. it's it is it has so many things that I think that that Americans would love. Um, so let's let's just say that 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 um gill in his one in his last action before he steps down which is that ever going to happen i know he said he's planning on stepping away you know i i've heard rumblings that he's going to go to the olympic committee and start working on that but i don't i don't i don't know that for a fact but uh let's say that he he brings you on board to help with trying to promote the afl in the united states what recommendations would you make to him to try to garner interest in the game of NFL of NFL fans? Well, I think you, you've almost knocked it on the head just before where we're we're growing the NFL in Australia is growing not almost by saturation. It's just having the ability to see the programs that we want to watch. And you know, we get Sports Center, we get uh, NFL Live, we get all those shows at reasonable times that we can actually watch them where mm-hmm. it sounds like we're not quite getting the AFL to the people where they, where they want it, you know, and it's, it's probably a little bit of uh, like channel sevens, you know, not wanting to give up the rights and things like that, which is, that, that's not going to help grow the game. We've got to, we've got to work together to move forward, to get the game to, to the people to actually watch and see and not mm-hmm. have to, you know, YouTube all the shows to be able to get their heads around it. Where right. just, if we, Get the get the show to the people, and that's that's the only way it can grow. I think. Yeah, that's that's yeah, and and the, and I think I'd mentioned it. The one the one big thing here is that you know that we're we're finally you know the Fox Sports here is like I said is is bringing some games on. So we're we'll get 
we'll get uh, you know anywhere between like three to six games each week, and then the rest of the games will be on what is called Fox Soccer Plus, which is like an additional pay service to get the games to watch them there. But they there's there's zero advertising, and I, yeah. I mean I I have seen advertising for NFL games during footy games. I have seen, you know, them, you know, saying that, you know, that this game is going to be on on this channel at such and such a time. I've seen that happen on on footy games, but there's nothing with the 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 channels here that are carrying these games. There's, you know, they don't. There's nothing that says, hey, you know, uh, you know, Collingwood and Richmond are are playing at you know four o'clock, you know, Eastern time here in you know in the U.S. Set your DVRs, you know, that sort of thing. And and I, I think it would be. It, I think it would be great if the uh, if the AFL would produce, and I don't know if the NFL does this, but does the NFL do like a a highlight show at all that that's specifically for Australia or for international uh, well, fans? For the NFL, we got Sports Center Australian version, which okay. they do cover. Okay, uh, yeah. So the teams that we're going to watch, so uh, that's probably the closest thing to a highlight show that we we get, but. Well, I don't. We don't. We don't need one because we have access to all the highlight shows That's that you're fair. getting. In. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, we we just you know we it's 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 almost like it's a secret that these games are on here. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You've yeah. got to get it out. People right. actually know. So, Watch it. Yeah, we we've some of the other folks that I've talked to have you know have have argued that maybe we should have a like on a. Uh, a Thursday night here at eight o'clock in the evening, which would be then in like an early, be early Friday morning, your time, yeah. um, you know, maybe a, a highlight show looking back at like, you know, key moments of the games from the previous weekend. And then, you know, spending, you know, maybe even a half an hour thing with them where you spend, you know, part of that half an hour talking about the games that they're going to be carrying on their networks that weekend and just introducing yeah. them and and you know because what we'll get here instead is we'll get uh we will get um 20 year old ufc fights on these channels we'll get uh you know old fat guys bowling um we'll get uh we'll get 15 year old texas hold'em poker tournaments and it and 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 they promote that sort of thing. And what is what the most mind boggling thing is, is that when the game, when a game will end, if the game, if there's still time before the, uh, the next program is supposed to start, they'll fill it with, and they've been doing this since I've been watching it. They'll fill it with this video. That's basically it's on a loop and it's gotta be the, it's gotta be one of the two rugby leagues in Australia. It's like 20 minutes of, of rugby with really bad techno music. That they're they're just showing rugby highlights and it and it's it's all and they're basically like saying that okay that game you just got done watching well this is the same stuff that you got what just got done watching and it's not the same thing it's two two completely different sports and it's just it's frustrating as heck that they cannot just take a couple of minutes and just let people know because because yeah if if the AFL could figure out how to get one percent of this country interested in in footy just one percent. That's ten percent of Australia's population. Yeah, exactly. Just one percent of this country interested. In it. Think about the windfall in terms of international memberships. People just going, "Holy crap, this game is awesome!" Let me. I want to go see it live. You know, an in, increase in tourism dollars. You know, in you know, increase in 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 memberships, which then that money can be turned around to 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 help all kinds of different things, whether it be you know concussion research you know, reconstituting local footy clubs that were decimated by COVID, um, you know, getting a stadium funded in Tasmania, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it may be to, to, to help grow the game, you know, setting aside money to, to put a roof on a stadium when they say, okay, we're going to put the 20th club in Darwin, um, which I would think that's where it has to go. If they're going to you know, have a 20th club. Um, Cause I, I don't think you're going to put a, I don't think at this point in time with, with, establishing two clubs in sydney adelaide perth that you're going to put a third club in any of those cities now you know, perth, perth 
Perth, you might have enough of a population in Sydney, you might have enough of a population to to say it's legitimate to do that. But, you know, GWS is struggling to to garner any kind of support there. So yeah. I, I wouldn't see them putting another club there. But, you know, Darwin, I think that, you know, if if they had a a stadium with with a roof, you know, you know, an indoor stadium like Marvel or something like that there. I think it would probably go like gangbusters because it it would be the off season for them there. Um, so I don't know. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, I think it's the greatest game on the planet, but it is just, it's, I think we're doing a very underwhelming job of support of supporting the game and promoting it here. And, and, and it's just frustrating. And I'm, I'm, that's why I'm reaching out to folks like you to try to figure out how can we get people excited about this game here? Because, you know, like I said, if an NFL fan saw this game, I think they would fall in love with it. Yeah, absolutely. I think they would, especially um, uh, some of the, the hits and things like that. If they, mm-hmm. if they had in the NFL, then they would see, you know, even just one quarter of the AFL and I think, wow, this is uh just next level kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So before we wrap up here, um, tell us about your show, your co-hosts, where we can find it. What can we expect from it? Uh, if they go back and dig into your, your catalog, what can they find there as an NFL fan here in the U S that, that might. And, and, and you know what, before I do that, have I, I should I meant to ask this to you earlier? Have you gained some traction with NFL fans, listen, you know, here in the U.S. listening to your show? Uh yeah, I, I think we're starting to make some some headway in there, okay. especially Australians that have moved over there. That okay, are, it's it's I think a little bit comforting sometimes, maybe to hear a a voice that you you can you relate to. Yeah, that have. Hearing the the yank, the mm-hmm. yank side, of, hearing a voice and and maybe relating. Like I said, we do refer back to the AFL and uh, and things like that. So I, th- I, I, from what I understand, from what I have heard, but it's not just the states. We've got people in, um, you know, over in the UK that are in mm-hmm. the same boat that are wanting that kind of, um, you know, exposure to the NFL, but they're hearing it from their native land. I guess, with lack of a better saying. Um, yeah, so I do. I do think we are making traction in the states. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, because sure. because I'm I'm at a point right now where about sixty percent of the people that listen to my podcast are in Australia. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it's 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 the overwhelming because there's you know there's not a huge amount of interest here yet. I mean, you know, we have the USAFL, which has about four thousand people playing in the game here in North, there's like 50 different teams across North America, uh, but in the U S that play the game, um, from, from Maine to, to Southern California, um, and everywhere in between, but it's, it's, a it's, it's a tough slog and there's not, there's not a whole lot of people that, that have gotten into it yet. And that's why I just, I just wish people, if I could just, you know, go and knock on everybody's door and say, Hey, set your DVR for this time on, you know, on FS1 or FS2 and then go watch this game. And, and here's a little introduction in terms of how the game works and, and you're going to love it. And and I think they would. So as I'd mentioned before, tell us about your show and uh, your co-hosts and uh, all of their, all of their wonderful qualities and you know, a couple of their character flaws since they're not here to defend themselves. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't need Introduction to sink the boot into those boys, they <laughs> uh, Yeah, it's it's pretty much just three Aussies that that. Well, I, I kind of got it started. I, I listened to a lot of podcasts and watched a lot of podcasts and thought, you know what? I felt there was a little void in the market for Australians who, like I said, wanted to listen to Australians speak about about the NFL. So mm-hmm. we've been. Just about twelve months now. Uh, we did start off, like you said, talking about all four uh, major sports, but that was mainly because you know in the off season we just needed we needed to get some content. We needed to start the ball rolling, but right, right. we're definitely a predominant podcast. But we will we will touch on all four sports, especially as as it comes to the the playoffs and the finals and things like that. Um, but yeah, we've been lucky enough to, to have a few big names that have come on from the States and we've got a lot of young 
Australians that are that are you know making headways in college, especially, which is it's good to hear, and and then it gives you a face to to follow and a team to go. You know, mm-hmm. uh, when when we turn around and say, you know, Thomas Yasmin from the the Utah Utes is playing this week, they go, oh, actually, I, I know who that is, and they can put a face to a name and identify with the team and things like that. So that's outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. That's outstanding. So, and you, the three of you, the three of you are all in Melbourne then. Uh, yeah, different parts okay. of Melbourne. Okay. Cause I know, cause I saw that, you know, when I was watching, uh, I think the episode that you just released yesterday or the day before, you know, you were talking about eventually you guys are hoping to, to work in studio together. Yeah. So we've had one in studio, but, uh, so Tim lives down on the coast where I'm up north in the country. So we're about two hours apart or an hour okay. and a half apart. Uh, okay, and then Danny lives in between. So we we uh, as we as we grow, we want to find a a, a common space, I guess, mm-hmm. where we can meet. Yeah, which and, is, and do it, it. It sounds like Danny is sitting pretty in pretty good shape. Then, if he's between the two of you, he's not going to have to drive very far. <laughs> nah, he knows how it, how it works. He works. <laughs> that was probably a good location on his part. Then, so. Where where can people find your show if they want to tune in? And I hope that they do. Yeah, so like we we are a bit more visual show now. We, we've moved onto YouTube. Okay. Uh, in like six months, so if you really want the full package, I think YouTube's a place to find it, which is just any given Sunday Australia podcast. But you can find us anywhere that you get a podcast. Just uh, just put in any given Australia, any given Sunday Australia, and and we'll pop up. Okay. Well, outstanding, man. Outstanding. So. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, my guest for this episode, encouraging you NFL fans to check out the AFL is Thomas McMillan. And Thomas, I want to thank you for, you know, coming home from work and and plopping down and, and, and relaxing with me for an hour to chat about this, because uh, I know you've got your weekend ahead of you now, and I I hope you have a a terrific weekend and, uh, you know, get studying on the draft and see who's, uh, who's going where and, and, I hope that you'll let me know in an upcoming episode how the Browns are going to fix their run defense. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. We, we have, we have, uh, we have had the, uh, the cheese head version, the Swiss cheese version of, of a run defense the last couple of years. We couldn't stop anything. <laughs> Definitely has been be having such a strong run offense. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, maybe he's just uh, Nick Chubb's just really uh, broken the boys down during uh, preseason, and they've gone in with no. Be. <laughs> that could be. Well, hey man, I I appreciate you taking time out. I, I thank you for this. This is this was a a, a lot of fun. Um, it's it's great to see a uh, a, a passionate NFL fan. Um, I wish your Lions the best of luck this year, except for the weeks that they're playing the Cats. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I do have a, I do have a soft spot for the lions because, you know, my favorite player play my, okay, let me rephrase that. My favorite player is on their list. Yeah. He can, he yeah. can't get a game, but he's on their list right now. <laughs> so, um, it's just a shame he couldn't stay healthy with Geelong because maybe he would yeah. still be there, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is, man. But I appreciate it. Thank you so very, very much, man. No, thank you for having me, mate. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely stay in contact and and do it again after the Lions win the flag this year, I reckon. Well, there you go. Abs- if that happens, absolutely. I mean, even if it doesn't happen, absolutely. I would love to have you back on again. Yeah. All right. Well, well, cheers. See you guys. Well, cheers. All right, Thomas, thanks so very much for taking time to sit down and chat with me, man. I do appreciate your insight. Uh, and I, I do really, really thank you for helping me to encourage my fellow Yanks to check out this awesome game. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember that you can find everything related to the podcast over at my website, a You can get on the mailing list there. And I had uh, two new uh, subscriptions to the mailing list. Again, it's free. You just add your email there. And when new episodes come out, that will be in your inbox about 45 seconds after that episode is released. If you enjoy the podcast, you can leave a review over there as well. It's a really huge help to the show. You can leave a review right on the website, or it'll actually take you out to Apple Podcasts, so you can leave a review there as well. Let's help you know, get, you know, kick that algorithm into into hyperdrive and uh, get some uh, get some more ears on this show. Now it was great; I did get my notification from Chartable, which tracks uh, podcast shows in terms of different categories. And last week, 
I was the number 21 football podcast in Australia. So that was pretty awesome. There's a lot of fantastic shows out there. Many of them are ones that I listen to. Many of them are guests that I've had on the podcast. So those of you who are listening, I cannot thank you enough for sharing the word. If you haven't done so yet, I hope you'll tell your friends about it. If you enjoy the podcast, it'd be absolutely awesome. You know, retweet a, uh, a new episode or, you know, text it, a link to your friends, let them know about it. You know, put it into a group chat, tell them how much you enjoy this crazy American who's fallen in love with your game and is so appreciative of your generosity and sharing your game with me. Now, also, back to my website real quick. If you enjoy the show and you want to help it financially, you can certainly do that. You can click on the Buy Me a Coffee button. Uh, there's a little yellow button on the bottom left-hand corner, but then there's also a little Buy Me a Coffee tab on the right-hand side. You can click on that. Anything that comes in from that uh, goes right back into helping to keep the podcast up and running to pay the bills for that, running the website, that sort of thing. Um, it's a huge help. You don't have to. There's nothing behind a paywall. Everything is here for you to hear. And I uh, absolutely you know, appreciate all of you who have helped out. And if you want to help out, you can certainly do that. Uh, if you have an idea for a guest or you have a club that you'd like to have get a local, you know, local club getting a shout out, feel free to drop me a note via email at a yank on the footy at gmail.com. Or you can leave me a note right on my website as well. You can find me on all of my socials, a yank on the footy at gmail.com, yank underscore on on Twitter, a yank on the footy podcast on Facebook, a yank on the footy over on Instagram. Those used to both be the same. It's a long story. If you go to my Facebook page and see my first post over there, just look for my name, Craig Wessels. I'm on LinkedIn as well. So if you happen to be on LinkedIn, certainly I'd love to connect with you there because LinkedIn has been an awfully wonderful um, avenue for finding guests for the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, look out for one another. Check on your friends. Let them know you love them. Go out for a coffee. Round one is in the books. Uh, exciting round of footy. I did very poorly on my tips this week. Uh, we'll be talking about that in episode 250, which will be coming up here in the next couple of days before the uh, first bounce of the Cats uh, back at the MCG to face off against Carlton. I appreciate the kind words, everybody. I appreciate your support. I thank you for sharing your wonderful game with me. And if this is your first time listening, I close out each episode the exact same way. Ladies and gentlemen, may your dribble kick never hit the post. I will catch you later. This has been episode 249 of A Yank on the Footy. Again, don't forget that you can reach me at yank underscore on on Twitter, A Yank on the Footy podcast over on Facebook, A Yank on the Footy on Instagram. Search out my name, Craig Wessels. That's just like Blood Vessels, but with a W on either uh, LinkedIn or on Facebook. I'm there as well. You can find me also at ayankonthefooty.com and my email address again, ayankonthefooty at gmail.com. All of these are listed in the show notes for every episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I do hope you'll share the episode with your friends and family. And until next time, goodbye.